Hi, my name is Amy Nur, and I am the indie dyer behind Pancake and Lulu Yarn. And I just thought that I would just decided to just go ahead and do it. And if you see this, then I guess it's okay. And if you don't see it, you won't ever know about it because I'm not going to post it. Um, about it, it was almost about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, I guess, that I discovered the whole world of video podcasts by knitters and dyers um, and designers on YouTube. And it is just such, it's just been such a nice um, way to connect sort of with other people um, in this industry. I've had my business Pancake and Lulu for a number of years. I started when my kids were very little and now they're teenagers. Um, and it was just kind of a slow start on Etsy for me. Recently, in the last year, I started my own website, but I still have my Etsy shop as well because I think I sell more on Etsy, actually. Um, but anyway, I have kind of gotten myself out there into the world of events, live events, and been a lot more kind of involved with Instagram. And I just love this kind of connection that you can have with um, people in our industry because it's a very solitary life and although I am a total homebody and I like working um, alone I enjoy it very much I'm very comfortable with it um, I also really love meeting people that have the same interests as I do and so through watching other people's video podcasts I have gotten so many amazing ideas and inspiration I feel like I can sit and it's almost like I have a knitting group which I actually don't have here where I live um and so I should go back probably I'm not going to be very good at this let me just tell you because it's my first time ever doing this I've watched many now um, but I am a very introverted, actually kind of shy person. So I, uh, I'm not going to be like, this will hopefully get better as I go along. As I said, I'm an indie dyer. I live in central New Jersey, Princeton, um, just outside of the downtown of Princeton. So I have, um, two kids and a husband and my kids are now 16 and 18. Um, and I actually started out as a hand spinner only, and I made art yarn when I first started and sold it on Etsy when my kids were like four and six or something. They were really young. Um, and it was kind of a, like, it was a great outlet for me. It was fun because Etsy had just started, um, so it was pretty easy to get good exposure. And my business grew pretty well um, back then, you know, when it was a pretty small marketplace. And uh, it kind of changed my life because it was like I was able to make some money, feel like um, develop, learn how to have a small business. Um, I'm still learning, uh, but it was a great way to start and still be a full time mom, stay at home mom, which was my really like what I wanted to do. Um, so that was my choice to to really be able to do that and kind of have this business on the side as well, like many moms. I think. Anyway, now I'm, my kids are older and I'm just feeling like there's a whole world out there. There are a lot of live events to go to and I've been having so much fun meeting people out there. And I just thought I would put this out there into the world so people could get to know me a little better because it's not that easy sometimes at the live events, though it's super fun to meet everybody. It's often like, you know, just a few minutes talking and then you're kind of like, doing the next thing anyway so bear with me and if you are interested in seeing how i grow because i'm sure this will like get a lot better in the future um please uh oh do the little subscribey thing with the notifications and please like like this video um if you don't like it that's okay you can not like it also but if you would like to leave a comment that would help me um that would be awesome please try to be constructive because I'm going to be very like hurt and sad if you write something mean. Um, but it's okay if it's constructive criticism. Anyway, um, I will put a list below too, below here, um, of all the vlogs and video podcasts that I've watched over the last year, um, the different 
vloggers that I just admire so much. They do such a great job and there's such a great range of styles. And I think that's what's really super fun. Um, because sometimes you're like in the mood for something really polished and sometimes you're in the mood for just like sitting back with a friend and knitting. So on to the show. I went to Vogue Knitting Live New York and I stayed at the Marriott where it was held and it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I took three classes, two on Saturday and one on Sunday. And um, I loved spending the night at the Marriott. It was, it was, lots of fun so convenient it even snowed on saturday so it was really nice not to have to drive back to princeton uh, we're about an hour um from without traffic from the marriott uh so i could have come back but it was so much fun staying and my husband came and met me and we went and saw um a show we went out to dinner and saw a show that night on saturday we saw the book of mormon which was super fun um really hilariously funny the first class i took on saturday with was with zandy peters it was called fascination stacked stitch scarf class i had to read that because i i made a couple notes here um i had trouble remembering what it was called because it was basically this it was the most i think it's the most basic of her cool stitches i don't know if you know who zandy peters is but she's designed she's sort of famous for designing this pattern uh, it's a knitting, it's a, it's a stitch pattern really, um, called Fox Claws. And I will, Ooh, I'll try to put a picture up. Um, actually, you know what I have? I don't have a good example of, I have not done it. So what I took was her class on stacked stitches. And this is kind of what it looks like. So you've probably seen her. This is the, the this is the stitch that I learned and it was it's tricky it's definitely tricky she's a, an amazing teacher i mean she taught had such good uh, handouts so that we can work on it at home um we did it in the class um we got to practice in the class we learned it in the class so i feel really good i haven't tried it for since a week ago so i really feel like i should try it soon so that i don't forget kind of the, the tips that she gave i did take some notes too but um she's a wonderful teacher and she's really cool and it was really fun to meet her um so i recommend her if you ever get to take a class with her and uh the second class that i took on saturday was with um franklin habit who i basically took the class because he was teaching it and the class that i took was called sweater design for your pampered pet and I do have two dogs and one is a puppy and I kind of had this fantasy that they would wear cute sweaters if I made them uh so I actually before the class actually it was right around when I signed up for the class which was a couple months ago I made this little sweater for my I have to write down the name I'll put the name of it up here um it's really really cute it was really fun this little sweater for my little puppy Dashiell I think it's probably too small for him now. The sad part was, so this didn't take long to make at all. As you can see, it's really straightforward, but it was fun to make. Um, and the pattern was good. It, I put it on him and he just wanted to chew it off. Like he was like, no. So I don't think that I'm going to make a sweater for my dogs. My other one is a three-year-old. Um, they're both beagle mixes. Um, De uh, Dustin is the older one and he's really adorable. You should go to my Instagram so you can see, um, how cute they are. Cause I love them. They're my buddies. Cause I work at home all day. Um, and they just keep me company and, um, they're like my surrogate new children since my kids are so much older now, they don't need me as much, but, um, well, dogs always, they always act like they need you. So it's nice. Um, anyway, Dustin, <laughs> He, we've got some, like somebody actually recently gave us like a raincoat kind of thing for him. He just hates it. Like he's not, he's not going to be a pet that um, will wear a sweater at this age anyway. Uh, I did add, actually, we used to have a Dalmatian who, when he got to be very old, loved wearing. He had kind of a, what was like a little horse blanket for, that was made out of fleece that he loved so much because as he got old, he got chilly at night. Um, I mean, during the day too, like he would wear it inside and he didn't want to ever take it off. Like he could just tell, like he loved it. He wanted to put it on. He didn't like it when you took it off him. So we left it on him a lot inside when he was really old. 
Um, so maybe they'll like it, like sweaters when they're older, but as Franklin Habit said in the class, don't ever try to make your pet wear a sweater um, because it shouldn't be like that. It should be like they want to, and there are dogs that want to, apparently. Like I, I mean, I don't know it, when my dogs will want to wear one, but my current dogs, but um, like I said, our Dalmatian used to love it. So that class was wonderful just because it was Franklin Habit. And it was also, it was really interesting because it taught you design for an odd shape. Um, and I haven't, I'm not a very experienced designer. Um, I've tried to design some things, but I don't think I really have the tools to, to, to do it. So um, the brain tools, I don't know exactly what to do sometimes. So um, I think that, his class will be a good foundation because it's talk, talks a lot of it talked a lot about measurements and um, how to measure different body parts. It almost didn't matter that it was a dog you were designing for because it's the same principles for designing for a human body or any shape. Uh, so it was a good fundamental type of class, and I think uh, besides he's just so charming, he's so brilliant. Um, he's like a wonderful teacher, really fun and funny. So I totally recommend, and I will take another class with him. I'd really like to take a steaking class because he talked a lot about steaks and how kind of what game changers they can be. Uh, all, most of his dog sweaters, he has an amazing collection of dog sweaters for his dog, who's a um, uh, pit bull, I believe. Um, and she, they live in Chicago and she loves sweaters. So he's made her some amazing ones. So you should check out his Instagram for that. Um, it was fun to see some of the samples and, uh, that was just, uh, yeah, I'd love to take another class with him. And then, um, between the two classes, I had lunch with a friend, which was super fun. Um, Lena of Soft Yarn Designs. Um, she's a designer and it was just so nice to see her. I hadn't seen her for, um, since last summer. So it was very perfect little interlude between my classes. And I hadn't actually gotten to go shopping yet. Um, so after the class, the second class, I hit the, one of the floors quickly. I mean, I couldn't, there are two floors, um, in the Marriott for Vogue knitting all the vendors. And I was like, I just have to go even though my husband was already like up in the hotel room waiting for me, we were gonna go out to dinner. Um, and I was exhausted after two classes. It's a lot to take two in one day. Um, but I just, I ran uh, through one of the floors just, just to look and I saw some friends and it was nice to um, just everywhere you looked was just beautiful yarn. And I knew I would be able to go the next day on Sunday. So, and it was, it wasn't actually that crowded by then. I heard it was really crowded earlier. We had a nice dinner at a restaurant called Bluefin or the Bluefin. Uh, it was like a fish restaurant, which was right between the hotel and the show. It was literally like a five minute walk to the show. It was so much fun to stay right in Times Square um, in the theater district and go to a show and back to the hotel and like go to sleep. And it was just, it was just really a nice, uh, took advantage of that for the show we don't usually go to shows um but anyway uh the next morning but my class started at nine it was with annie lupton of boho chic fiber co um she taught a class that i was super excited to take and it was great called customize your own color work top down sweater um it was really really cool she sort of talked a little bit about um how to design the yoke uh, with a cut with color work. Um, she gave us a pattern that's kind of like a basic vanilla pattern. Um, but then let us with this, um, she gives a couple of these empty charts, uh, that we could then work on. I worked on this one. I was really just fooling around, but it kind of gives you an idea. I used pencil to just kind of color in where I would do color work. I didn't even get to the colored pencils part, which I, I had brought, that was part of the requirements to bring. Um, but I didn't even get to the color part. I just was going with like what kind of design I wanted. I'm super excited to work. Um, I don't think I'm probably, I was just like experimenting, but I've, I'm excited. I want to actually photocopy this so that I can 
work on some more ideas. I think it'd be really cute to do something like really seasonal maybe for Christmas with some kind of Christmassy design or um, I don't have a Christmas sweater so I thought that'd be neat. I also I saw last um, fall some amazing Halloween ones so I think something like that is what I'd like to design um, and do my do her vanilla sweater that she has this pattern for. Um, she gave us a lot of good tips and she's a great teacher so um, I recommend her as well. I will put all of my classes names and teachers down below as well um, so you can refer to them if you ever get a chance to take a class with one of these wonderful teachers. It's just really fun to get to know them a little too because they're like three hour classes um, and you can ask them anything. You can ask them stuff about just since they're professionals it's like the care for how they care for say uh, the dog sweaters like I was curious like does he throw them in the wash like what how does he care for those dog sweaters because I'm that's one of my other concerns is like my dogs would totally trash the sweater anyway um then I got to shop and I just wanted to share some of my fun acquisitions I didn't get a lot because I'm a yarn dyer so I don't really need much yarn but there there are a couple of yarns that I wanted to look for and the first, actually the first thing I got was that little, um, I think I got this on Saturday. I knew I wanted to get something by Freya. Uh, I don't know if that's backwards. It might be, uh, because I'm doing this on my phone. Anyway, uh, so I ended up getting a super bulky, it's a really pretty colorway. It's, it kind of goes from this acidy, it's almost like a mustardy yellow acid green into like a purple browns and purples and um i had recently seen the interview um i can't remember the person's name i know freya was her dog's name um on christy glass knits um she has just she had just put up a interview and this is one of those yarns that i just can't dye myself because it's a long gradient and there's a totally different system for that um so I thought this would be really fun to do a quick hat. And I found this pattern that I would like to use for it. It's called Perky Little Hat. And it's on Ravelry. I can't remember if it was a free pattern or not. It's by Sharon Lynch. And I will put that below as well. Um, so if you come back to see another episode, maybe I'll have this done soon. I gotta do it soon because before I know it, it is going to be too warm. Today is a really awful rainy day. Um, it's like warm and rainy, which I don't like. Anyway, then I, so the whole time, the other thing I was looking for, another kind of yarn that I don't make myself is um, sock yarn that's self-striping um, with wider stripes. And I was like so excited to try to find that. I thought that is something I really want that I saw so many people doing cool advent socks. Um, I know mustache yarns was selling it in India Untangled. I sold it in India Untangled too. And so I didn't get as much of a chance. I should have bought her yarn then. Um, she's lovely. She came and introduced herself, um, to me right in the very beginning. Um, and I forget her name, but I can, link her below as well. Um, I'm gonna have a lot to link. Anyway, uh, I really wanna buy her yarn the next chance I get. I thought I might see it in person there um, and be able to choose. I might just order some of her yarn at some point, but I did end up getting two skeins for socks. Anyway, um, the only, oh, so so I kind of gave up. I was like, I cannot find any self-striping wider striped sock yarns. So I went to one of the booths that I knew I really wanted to get um, yarn from which is Cat Sandwich. And Cat Sandwich, um, this is such a pretty one too. This colorway, oh I don't know what this really means but it's called Card Captor Sakura. I don't know I, if anyone knows what Card Captor refers to that'd be interesting to know. Um, anyway I have felt I, she's got such amazing speckles and when I was in her booth, she had socks knit up with her yarns and they're all very micro striped. My yarns that I dye don't really micro stripe because it's more of a random, I try to do, um, I try not to have it striped because I don't want pooling. Um, so I don't dye it 
in the same way that I used to dye it, um, which is the way she dyes it, where it's more like one section, next section. I don't usually do that, so mine don't really stripe in that way. So her socks really striped um, with any of her yarn, she said, in this micro striping way. And so I decided I'd, I'd go for that because I wanted her yarn anyway. So it was like kind of two birds. So I'm gonna make a pair of socks out of this. Um, and I t asked her if she had seen any of the like really self-striping wider stripes and she told me where to go. So I went up back up to Nitty City where I got, they gave me this adorable bag, which I love, it's so cute. Um, and I found, oh, I already caked it up, that's right. I found, oops, a skein of this yarn called Artistic Yarn artistic yarn um, by Abby. And the color I got is called Dragon Fruit. And I love, it came with this adorable Dragon Fruit stitch marker. Oh, can, can you see it? Anyway, I don't know if that's working, but it's a cute little stitch marker that looks like a cut dragon fruit. And the color, well, I caked it up so it looks like this now, which is cool because it's like a, almost like a tartan. But it's got, the white, you cannot tell really anymore, but the white has very fine, fine speckles of black. So it's kind of like the way the dragon fruit uh, has these little tiny seeds in it. You can see that. And it stripes in this really cool way. So I'm excited about that. Oh, and the bag that I have it all ready to go in is my Home Row Fiber Co. I think it's called Home Row. I don't know if it's called Fiber. It's Home Row Bag which was, this was a collaboration with Owl. I got this at, where did I get this? Maybe Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. Um, I love the colors of this bag, just love it. And this uh, proceeds for the, some portion goes to help animals from being rescue animals. Helps animal rescue rescue animals. Um, and I love the dog, the dog on this bag on this print looks so much like Dustin, my dog. So I fell in love with it. And I'm really excited to do those socks. I think I'm going to do the toes and cups and heels out of this sparkly gray. This is my colorway that's called gray space. And I think it'd be cute. I'm not really sure. I haven't started yet, so we'll see. Um, my son might come home any minute now and I may have to stop recording, but let's just keep going. Oh, the last thing, was it the last thing I got? Oh, I got two things just, oh, so those are the things I wanted to get, basically. Um, then I fell in love with, I actually went back to get this because I fell in love with it. It is an embroidery kit it's like a little bag that's about the size of a good sock. It's a similar size to this bag. Um, they had one all embroidered up, but it's so cute. It's a French company um, and it comes with this pattern. The uh, drawing is printed on the linen and it comes with all the threads and a needle. And it is by Chat Dans la Guille. Dans la Guille. Sorry, I'm not good at pronouncing that word. It's really hard to pronounce. Um, oh, I don't know if you can even read that. Anyway, I will put that for, down below too. This came from Brooklyn Haberdashy had a booth. It was so cute. God, they have so many cute things. Um, just really charming items if you ever get a chance. I don't know where they are located. I mean, obviously it seems like they're in Brooklyn. I didn't know about them, I should say. Um, so I'm gonna look for where they are, but they had a few kits by this, this uh, company from France and they're just so cute. So I'm gonna do that at some point. I like to do embroidery, but I'm not very experienced at it. I've done some, but I think it, it's got all the directions. I think that the stitch directions might be in French, so wish me luck. Um, and I guess the, that's kind of the last thing that I had to say about Vogue knitting, except how much fun it was. I didn't get sick. Um, I don't think that many people got sick this year. 
I heard a few people might have gotten sick. Um, but anyway, it was so much fun. I can't wait till next year and the next festival I get to go to. I uh, just really love, saying hello to so many people. There's some people that I chickened out and didn't say hello to, which I feel really bad. I don't know why, sometimes I get just shy, I guess. Like I just feel like sometimes you see somebody, you, you wanna go introduce yourself because you know who they are and you wanna tell them that you're a fan or you've met them before, like just briefly. And you just kind of, I just do anyway. I get a little overwhelmed sometimes and I just get shy. So I apologize if you saw me there and you kind of have met me and I didn't say hello to you, but I wanted to, I really did. Um, anyway, so, oh, let me just show you what I wore. I, my latest, this is one of my latest finished objects is this Starflake shawl by Stephen West. And I, oh, I'm so proud of this shawl. It was such a fun as all of his every project I think except for one project by him maybe two um that I didn't love doing but I loved doing this um the brioche was very challenging for me because of the chevron pattern of the increases and decreases I actually I don't I haven't done brioche very much um I really like the rhythm of the brioche just straight the plain rhythm um with the two colors, I think it's really exciting because it's this reversal, creates this reversible fabric. So there's purple. It's actually, yeah, you can see better that way. Purple in the back. And I chose to do the white for the front. Um, I found the chevron part a bit challenging because of the increases and decreases with brioche. It was hard. It took me a really long time, but I finished. I'm excited. Um, to have finished this project. I was really excited to use these two yarns, which I did not dye. The, the brown and the boucle are actually by, the brown is by Volenvine. Um, came in her, she had like a mystery club last fall, I guess. Maybe it was the summer called um, the Gothic Yarn Club, where she sent three different mystery skeins for three months, I think. Um, anyway, it was super, this was one of them. I can't remember the name, so I'll have to, you can, I'll, I'll put my Ravelry page for this, um, cause it's on there. And then this boucle, which is so gorgeous, is by, uh, Kindred Red. And I sold a cross from Kindred Red in Indian Tangled last fall. And I just was staring at her yarn the whole day. And near the end, I had to go and get this one cause it was just so special. Um, and it's this fun, it's the fun blue clay, which I actually have in my shop right now. Um, some colors that I'll show you too. And the purple and the white are my yarns. This white, whitish one is, it's really pretty. It's got lots of colors in it actually, but they're kind of muted. It is called, I think I called it ghost town. It was an October yarn of the month for my yarn club and the purple I actually dyed up for a different Stephen West project that I never made. Um, so I was excited to use that in this. Um, that is called Witch Hobble and I still have one skein of that in my shop right now. Um, so anyway, I love making this. It was really fun too because it's kind of bobbly and I did it on the edge too to make kind of almost like, it's like a little bobbly edge, like a picot bind off. Um, it looks really good right here. Anyway, that is what I wore on Saturday. I wore a different Stephen West shawl that I, it was the last year's, the 2018 Mystery Knit Along shawl texture time. I wore that on Sunday because I hadn't really worn that yet. I like that shawl, but I like this one better. Um, my other finished object, which is not quite finished, but I'm really proud of it, is my Advent shawl, Adventure or shawl, I think it's called, by Amba O'Brien. And this uses all of the mini skeins from my ad advent kit for this year. So it started out down here on the green side. Um, and on Instagram, I posted daily when I was using each yarn and I'm really excited how it turned out. I loved designing the advent mini kit. The reason this isn't quite finished is because 
I have a few more, I've got these tassels on the end, which I need to trim. And I think I have like about five more colors to put tassels on each side. So these tassels go along each, each side um, and they're not trimmed at all. So I kind of, actually this was a knit along and the, do, the deadline is February. So I'm gonna finish this and put it up there so I can be, I don't know if I'm really eligible. I guess I'm eligible for a prize even though I did an advent kit. Yeah, why not? It's not my pattern or anything. But anyway, this is a really big, pretty shawl and it was so relaxing and fun to work on um, over the holidays. I like how actually the colors can be, depending which side you put next to you, um, up top when you wrap it, it can be almost two different color shawls, um, depending how you wear it. Like you can do the warm colors. Yeah, if you put the, if you put the warm colors up next to you, then it can be like a cool color shawl. Depending how you kind of wrap it. It's really big and really pretty. So you can kind of fold it whichever way looks you're in the mood for. Warm or cool. And um, it was such a relaxing, I got a little behind, but it was super relaxing to be able to, it was a nice amount for each day that you were supposed to be doing. It seems like a lot, but it's such an easy, relaxing stitch. You could, you could manage it. Like I did get busy around when I got closer to Christmas because family, but anyway, really proud of this too. Especially cause I think it's really, I was, it's fun to dye the advent kits. I loved it. I did. 50 kits this year and sold them all kept one um but that was amazing i could even probably have done a few more because i sold out the very i sold out near the end of november but people still would have bought them i think if i had more left um so maybe i'll try to do more next year even it's just so satisfying because you you design it and you don't really know exactly what it's going to look like until it's all knit up and just the feedback from people, other people knitting theirs and showing it to me, other patterns, not everyone knit this year's advent patterns. She, Amba has like three years of patterns, plus there are many other kits people can do or patterns people can do. Um, so it was so, so much fun. I love doing it. I'm going to start earlier, even earlier. I started I took pre-orders in March last year. I think it was March. We all the dyers kind of started taking pre-orders. And I'm gonna do that again. Um, and I'm gonna start planning it a little sooner too, because you do the pre-order and then you kind of forget about it for a while and then you have to really plan it because you've got all these orders. Um, anyway, I think this is running a little on the long side. So I, I have two more things I wanted to talk about quickly or three more things. One are um, is in my shop right now, I just put, well, these are two new yarns that I have dyed kind of for Valentine's Day-ish. I mean, this one's not really Valentine's-y, but I did call it um, Thrill on Blueberry Hill, which I don't know if you remember. I think it's a Fats Domino song. I looked it up to make sure I was getting the lyric right. Um, it's like a fun old timey song. And so I called it Thrill on Blueberry Hill, which is in the shop right now. And it's just lots of blues and purplies. And it's really pretty. And this one I decided to call Love American Style, which is all cheesiest old show from like the 60s, I guess. Maybe 70s. This one is called Hawaii Five-O. And this one, I love this one called Free Fall, which is really beautiful, really beautiful colors. Um, and this one's called Volcano. So I have a few of these also in the shop now under the shop update section. I'm gonna be taking these with me what's left what's left of them this weekend next weekend i mean on saturday february 1st i'm going to be selling at do you knit in um fanwood new jersey so i'm going to be there on saturday february 1st 2020 for the whole day i think they're open from 10 to 4 and i'm so excited because i've only ever done it's, it's gonna be my first chunk show that i'm there in person um i've done one where i sent my yarn to a, a shop outside of boston um I did that in the fall, but I'm so excited to, to be there. So if you're around, please come visit me.
come come see me there because it'll be fun. Um, and then the last thing, really quickly, I feel like I'm rushing now because I don't want to go on too long. I have been obsessed with the Love Note cardigan that I cast on on the Sunday morning of Vogue Knitting Live in the hotel. I've been just just charging through this. It's so fun and easy. I loved doing the lace pattern, which you can't see that well right now because of the fact that it's lace and not blocked, but it's really pretty. And they're like hearts. Everyone knows this pattern, I'm sure already. I'm like one of the last people to make it. But I'm excited because I'm holding together my Surrey. I have to switch to another ball suit. This is my Surrey and Bone. And actually, here's my other ball. Oh, I'm caught. Here's my Surrey. Surrey silk and Bone. It's so pretty. And it's so soft. It's softer than mohair. I like mohair too, though. Mohair's got this like sheen to it. And this is like almost like a matte. Like to me, that's one of the differences. Like it's it's softer to me too, but it's also matte instead of having, even though it has silk in it, it doesn't have the same shine that mohair has. Mohair itself is kind of shiny, which is beautiful too. But this is my, I decided to call this love letter um, that I dyed up especially for my own love note, but I decided to make this a Valentine color this year. So I'm actually this afternoon gonna be dyeing a lot more of this. So this should be in the shop soon um, in a few different bases. I'm gonna do the same base so that I can make some kits because I'm really excited with how these are looking together. Um, so I'm gonna make love note kits and I'm gonna dye some extra, you know, a lot of this as well in a few other bases, my ply decay and um, single bulky, which I think is gonna look amazing on it because I love the single bulky base and uh, some sparkle too. So check out my shop. I'll put the address here as well as below. And um, thank you so much for watching this long. If you have watched this long, sorry, this was a little amateur. I mean, it is, I'm a total amateur when it comes to podcasting, this is my first time. So thank you for staying with me. And um, if you want to watch me again, um, if you want to see if, how much better I can be someday, um, you could subscribe and like and hit the little bell as well for notifications. Thank you. Bye. But it is um, um, awkward. Anyway, uh, so it's super fun. I can't remember.